terms of, um, of, of draft implementing rule is invoke services. And uh, for this, the work has started. Uh, we have a technical, a technical report on the state of play for service invocation. And uh, the network services drafting team has actually started work uh, on this topic. Um, there, there are some uh, research issues that still need to be uh, handled within uh, this uh, context, uh, and that is something that is done in collaboration, in fact, with the network services drafting team. The, um, the network services are obviously uh, important because they connect the national infrastructures to the Inspire Geo portal. Uh, and in order to uh, facilitate uh, this process of connecting national services and of, uh, of, of refining the uh, guidelines that have been made available by the network services drafting team, uh, the Commission has proposed uh, to uh, address the requirement in the network services regulation regarding the initial operating uh, capability uh, to offer member states uh, help by establishing an uh, initial operating capability task force. Well, this task force um, was uh, set up in May 2009, and the initial focus on this, uh, of this uh, task force is the discovery and view services. The, um, the Minutes of the meetings of, uh, and, and of teleconferences are available on the Inspire website. If you are interested in following this work, you can use then the Inspire website to be, uh, to be kept in, informed. Um, there, there are a number of uh, activities going on in that, um, uh, in that uh, group. One that I would like to highlight here is that a service team has been established to further develop the uh, technical guidelines for um, discovery and view. Um, and the aim there is to reduce as much as possible any ambiguity that may exist still in the specifications in order to uh, guarantee interoperability. Uh, a final version of the updated technical guidelines is expected uh, later this year. Some words about the Inspire Geo portal. Um, the Geo portal uh, prototype development that has been led by uh, my colleagues at JRC is focusing on the discovery and view services and on metadata. There are a number of tools uh, that are created in the context of this development and um, we have now an updated prototype Geo portal uh, available. Uh, the aim uh, of this development is to align the portal with the, the new developments that are taking place uh, in the updating of the guidelines for uh, discovery and view, uh, but also, of course, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the activities are, um, are aimed at connecting to um, services that are um, proposed by member states, uh, network services. Uh, the Discovery and Review web clients are based on open source software and uh, the intention is to release the uh, development, the, uh, the source code under the uh, European uh, Union license. The future development includes the continuation of tests uh, with the member states in the context of the initial operating capability. Um, there will be new work on download and transformation services and, um, uh, and the uh, geo portal, the prototype portal will be used for uh, developing the specifications of uh, the uh, operational portal. A few words on spatial data services. Uh, as uh, you may have noticed, the implementing rules on the interoperability of spatial data sets and services has been focusing primarily on the uh, data part so far. Um, and uh, it, it was found uh, that there is a need to refine the scope of spatial data services in view uh, of the corresponding implementing rules to, uh, related to this. Um, 
This should be based on uh, the adopted and approved Inspire implementing rules. And uh, the reason why this is uh, necessary is that uh, we should confirm the variety of the spatial data services as listed in the keyword selection of the metadata regulation. And um, we should discuss with the member states the overall frame of interoperability and harmonization of existing services to be specified in the implementing rule. So this is an activity uh, that uh, has started um, together with the uh, Inspire member states contact points and uh, will continue. Uh, and and uh, there was a workshop this week to further clarify uh, a number of issues. The uh, next steps for this are uh, that uh, after this exploratory uh, phase where we uh, discuss with the member states contact points, we make a decision on whether or not to go ahead with the development of an implementing rule. And then if this is the case, uh, the second phase will consist of uh, the actual development of the implementing rule, which uh, should be ready by May 2012. Maintenance and implementation was already mentioned uh, by Daniele Ricci. I will not go uh, into very much detail here, but what I would like to do is to uh, explain why this is uh, so important. Um, first of all, we see changes in the European environmental legislation with an impact on requirements for spatial data. So that uh, is one trigger that would require the maintenance of, uh, of, of the infrastructure as such, but also, of course, of the technical guidelines and perhaps also of the implementing rules. Um, new pan-European or cross-border use cases, uh, issues detected in the implementation phase, which is also very important, of course, uh, changes in the as-is situation, member states are uh, evolving, adopting new technologies, uh, the uh, need for the harmonization with international standards or uh, other initiatives, consistency with data specifications developed at the later stage of INSPIRE, uh, errors or ambiguities that have occurred in the documents, um, and also inconsistencies between uh, documents produced in the context of INSPIRE. So these are the reasons why uh, there is a need for maintenance and the Commission uh, is uh, discussing now with the member states, uh, with the INSPIRE uh, committee members, uh, on how to best uh, address uh, the issue of maintenance. Thank you.